I, female 31, am a reader. Used to read a lot in my teenage years as an escape method for many of my problems and recently got back to reading. I read classic books since this category is my favorite. In addition, I spend time and effort visiting libraries and online shops to collect books. The thing is, my husband, 33, hates it when I read. We had just returned from our honeymoon two months ago, and he's been complaining about books taking our special time away, specifically at night. But I like to think that I'm balancing with my reading time. He started calling me grandma or saying I reminded him of an old lady neighbor to get me to quit reading, but it didn't budge me. A week ago, I found out that he's given my book collection away, and I was devastated after he defended himself, saying he did this for my own good and for the sake of our marriage since I seemed to forget my priorities. So I flipped out, yelled at him that those books were hard to get, and demanded he pay me and replace them right then. But he said that I really should invest my time in an outdoor hobby we could both do, but I was having none of it and demanded he replaces the books. I gave him a list of every name of every book, and when he saw it, he laughed and asked if I was really still thinking about those books and suggested I move on. But I yelled at him, telling him he had a week to replace them, and that was it. He's trying to get me to let it go, and others say it was childish of me to start a fight over some books while the library's open, but they got no comment from me. Am I the idiot for expecting him to replace the books? Not the idiot. This was a power move, trying to assert control and completely jumping over boundaries. It's worrying that he did this just two, three months after you got married. Even if this was the only red flag, and outside of this he's a wonderful human being, it's not tolerable, and he shouldn't be allowed to think that it's no big deal. Do not back down, and he needs to understand why what he did is unacceptable. He's the one who started a fight over books, and also the one who escalated it. You standing up for yourself isn't starting a fight. For real, maybe he would get more into reading if it was divorce papers. Two months and he's jealous of books? OP's own happy memories? And still sees nothing wrong with it? I know we're not getting the full picture of this guy, but this is a major red flag. I'd lock away anything else he's commented on. OP, throw the husband away and replace him with more books. Your marriage is doomed. This is a much bigger issue than books. Get out now while you still have some self-esteem and confidence left that he hasn't sucked out of you yet. There are plenty of men who aren't threatened by a woman who reads or pursues hobbies outside of him. Not the idiot, but I wonder how you married this person who doesn't let you have your hobbies. This isn't going to be popular, but everyone's the idiot here. Husband is definitely an idiot for doing that. I want to get that right out of the way first and foremost. In no way am I agreeing with what he did. However, OP, you admit that you use reading as an escape. And instead of taking the not-so-subtle hints that your husband would like some more of your attention, you choose to continue to indulge in your escapism. If this were alcohol, not a single soul would question a husband who destroys his wife's wine collection. I also wonder how open and honest communication and expectations are or were before your marriage. Was your husband aware that you intended to escape into books regularly? And how often, long are you doing this for? Many things are going on here and it's only barely about the property. I met a guy on a dating app. We hit it off and arranged for our first date. Things were going well. We had sat down and had started some small chat. Finally, our waitress came over asking what we wanted to order. I say what I want and gesture to him so he can order. He orders and then pulls what I think is about $15 on the table. He says, this is your tip. And every time you mess up, I take some away. The waitress looked nervous immediately. I'm sitting there a bit shocked, but mostly embarrassed because I wasn't expecting this. She must have been new because she spilled some drinks on our table that night gave us the wrong food, and overall just seemed lost. He took away $13. I asked him why he thought doing tips this way was a good idea. He said it was the best way to ensure good service. When I disagreed, he said, can't always be nice to these people. It's not a respectable job. I decided then that I wanted nothing to do with him and called the waitress over to get the bill. 
I slapped a $20 bill in her hands and got up to pay for my meal. Later that night, he demanded to know why I had given her a tip, despite her poor service, and I told him it was because he decided to treat her livelihood like it was a game. He said she'd never improve her service because of me and that I'm just a people pleaser. I blocked him, but I've wondered ever since if that was the right thing to do. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. So he made her nervous, which likely made her service worse. Then, then, he had the absolute gall to say, can't always be nice to these people? It's not a respectable job? What? He is using the service she provides and insulting her and all the people who share the same job. Jesus above, I'm glad you ditched the guy. I wish that $20 in her hand wasn't the only thing you slapped that night. That kind of game is only played by rude folk who do not respect those they deem below them. That poor waitstaff didn't deserve to be treated like trash because of her job, because she was new. After all, she's human and not a perfectly functioning robot. Kindness is free. Everyone's the idiot here, him for obvious reasons, and you for not getting up and walking away the moment he put that money down. He deliberately humiliated your waitress before she'd even taken his order. I don't care that you gave her $20 for her trouble or questioned him later on or tried to change his mind. You let him abuse her throughout an entire evening first while you sat and had dinner with him like it was okay. You legitimized what he was doing by sitting there and sharing a meal, chatting away with him, letting her serve you, knowing that every minute that passed where you continued to be her customers, he was continuing to degrade and dehumanize her and you were enabling it. And then you come in here like you're the good one because after she spent an entire evening being dehumanized and you had your date and your meal, you finally got around to saying something. Nope, you're as much of an idiot as he is for enabling him. My girlfriend and I have been together for four years and moved in together just under a year ago. I make more money than she does, so I pay 60% of our rent and utilities, but we split things like food, internet, and most dates 50-50. However, she got laid off from her job a few months ago, so she's trying to budget more. She's looking for a job in her desired field, but is struggling to find something close to us. I've encouraged her to get a job because plenty of places near us are hiring, but she doesn't want to work retail or fast food, which I can understand. But at the same time, you can't complain about not having money when places are hiring less than a mile from our house. I'm a gamer, and like many others, I've been looking for a new Xbox for months. Last week, and I finally lucked out and found one, so I snatched it up right away. I was at home setting it up when my girlfriend got home from running some errands, and she asked what I was doing. I told her I finally found a new Xbox, and instead of being happy, she flipped out on me. She told me it was irresponsible to spend that much money when we have to tighten our budget and asked what things we would have to go without for the next few months because of how much I spent. I told her we don't have to tighten our budget at all, just her. I told her I was doing fine for money and that she was wrong to force her money issues on me. She yelled at me that we were supposed to be a team and help each other when we were down. I told her I agreed, but that doesn't mean I have to give up things that I enjoy just because she doesn't want to work at Target or Burger King. Then I asked her how much she spent on essential oils since she lost her job. That did not help, and she started saying how that's different since those serve a purpose beyond wasting time. When she didn't give me a straight answer, I just said, so more than I spent on the Xbox? She yelled at me that I was an idiot, and she couldn't believe I would do something so selfish when we could lose our apartment, which we won't. Even if she can't make her rent payment, I could afford to cover us for at least six months if needed. And if it goes to that point, I'd pretty much have to force her to work since I'm not looking to support her if she's able to work but is refusing to. She's barely talking to me the last few days and anytime I try to get some gaming in, she makes a huge point about avoiding me or stomping around. I don't feel like I did anything wrong and she's just lashing out at me because she's feeling down about herself. Not the idiot, she's not pulling her weight and she's refusing to take any job that she deems to be beneath her. She's just taking her frustrations out on you because you have money to spend on something you've been wanting and she doesn't 
and she's stressed about it. Does she qualify for any unemployment benefits? Does she not realize that she can take a temporary job until something in her preferred field comes along? Not the idiot. Essential oils are so expensive, and the idea that they serve any meaningful purpose other than smelling nice is absolute garbage. Yes, they do smell lovely and can be very relaxing if you're stressed out. There is absolutely zero objective scientific evidence that they do anything else other than potentially poison animals and cause respiratory problems in small children, though. None. She can spend her money on what she wants, but the argument that essential oils have a use is ridiculous and unjustifiable. OP, keep that Xbox. Ditch the girl. If you're picturing a future in which you might have kids with this woman, you might want to find out now if she'd take a sick child to the doctor, or would she rely on her useful essential oils? Would she get those children meds or use essential oils? I realize I'm referring to a very stereotypical essential oils person. Still, you might save yourself some time, money, and long-term heartache if you think very seriously about whether your ideals and long-term goals are truly compatible. My husband, 39, and I, 37 female, have been married for eight years and have two kids. Despite the age difference, he and his sister, sister-in-law, 31, have always been close. There's also a brother in between who isn't relevant to this post. Sister-in-law is an artist who has been working full-time on her art since graduating from school several years ago. I respect art and believe it can be someone's full-time job, but the fact that she's never made any money off of her art, aside from selling the occasional piece to a family friend, I don't want to pass judgment on her because I'm no expert, STEM person here, but she's been trying to make it for years and years at this point and hasn't gained any traction. I don't think she'll start making money off it anytime soon. Still, she considers her art her career, and my husband is supportive of her. We own multiple pieces of hers. Her parents were fully supporting her financially until a couple of years ago, when she moved in with her boyfriend who took over. She and the boyfriend broke up earlier this year, and she moved into a nice apartment funded by her parents. Unfortunately, my in-laws recently passed away, suddenly and unexpectedly. It was devastating. What they left behind will support sister-in-law for a while, but not forever, and not in the standard of living she's accustomed to, which includes having to move out of her current apartment. Husband told me he wanted to give her money every month to keep working full-time on her art and maintain her standard of living. We both, fortunately, have high-paying jobs and a lot already saved for our kids, so we could easily afford it. However, I'm not too fond of the idea of supporting a non-disabled adult forever who could make a living but chooses not to. I'm okay with helping her out temporarily while she starts working and figures out how to make her own living, but not forever. I don't care if she starts out at minimum wage. She just has to be doing something that will make money and start her path to independence. I did slip up and call it a real job to my husband. She and husband are both telling me I'm an idiot because if she has to work full time, she won't have time anymore for her art and that being an artist is a real job already. He says I don't understand the sibling bond since I'm an only child. His other brother agrees with me and said it would be about time sister-in-law got out into the real world. Am I the idiot? Edit. Sister-in-law has submitted work to many galleries and tried to sell her art online via social media, etc. She's tried to sell to a larger audience than family friends slash family members, but hasn't gotten any bites. So her not selling her work widely isn't for lack of trying, unfortunately. I'm not sure if it's because she's not great at promotion or because the market doesn't want what she's selling. Not the idiot. I'm an artist and I am working to sustain my art career on the side until it can become my full-time job. My current job is slightly related to art though. No capable adult should expect to piggyback on other people's work for the rest of their lives. That is really disgusting. Your husband is slightly idiot just because I get wanting to help out immediate family, especially since you guys are well off. But your sister-in-law is a massive idiot. She needs to spend a bit of time in a less affluent part of the world and become a fully formed adult, in my opinion. OMG, tell your husband you'll be quitting your high-paying job to be an artist. He'll have to provide for the family 100% and 
and won't be taking on any additional childcare or household duties because, after all, your art is a full-time job. See if he thinks it's still a real job. LOL, OMG, I love this. Hey, honey, good idea about supporting your sister to continue doing what she wants. This brings me to this. I've decided just to stay home and make quilts and sell on Etsy or at local fairs. This is going to be so much fun. I'll be able to do what I want all day. Oh yeah, better get a housekeeper that cooks because your sister and I will be too busy with our dream jobs. Thanks, lol. I am 23 female and my boyfriend Eric is 24. Yesterday I was preparing to go clubbing with Eric. It's been ages since we've gone out and I was super excited to go dancing with him. I spent a long time getting ready. I wore my favorite night out dress, heels and earrings. I also did my makeup nicely. 45 minutes before he was supposed to pick me up, Eric texted me saying he didn't feel like going out. I got worried and asked if he was ill or had a headache, but he said he just wanted to relax and play some mobile games. I was really disappointed and asked why he didn't tell me earlier before I started getting ready. He said he didn't want to upset me, but honestly, I'm even more upset now. I was about to change out of my dress when I suddenly decided to go to the club. I obviously didn't want to go clubbing alone, so I called a few of my female friends to see if anyone was up for it. My friend Alicia agreed and said she would be ready in an hour. So we went and had a really good time at the club. When I returned home, I saw a few messages from Eric asking what I was doing. I told Eric that I went clubbing with Alicia a few hours ago. I didn't tell Eric before I went because he'd get super angry and stop me. Something similar happened before. He totally flipped out and said I was being unfair to go without him. He said that I should have told him before I went. I told him that if I told him, he'd force me not to go. And he said, that's not at all true. Later, Eric made a tweet saying, my girlfriend ditched me for her friends. Hashtag life sucks, which was really embarrassing and childish in my opinion. Many of Eric's friends messaged me trying to know what happened. When I told them, they called me a huge idiot. I'm kind of rethinking what I did, and I'm starting to think that I might be an idiot here. But, at the same time, I don't exactly regret going to the club with Alicia. We had so much fun, and I got a ton of compliments on my makeup and outfit. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot at all. You made plans with him. He decided to bail last minute. So you went out because you were all dressed. Nothing wrong with that. He sounds like a major idiot, and I'd maybe think twice about the relationship. Especially when you say that he'll have stopped you from going. No one should be stopping you from going out. He should have followed through on his plans to go out with you. Not the idiot. Do you live with this man? Is he your husband? If not, he has absolutely no say in what you do in your free time. How can he say you ditched him when he was the one who canceled plans? You're too young to be sitting in the house just because the boyfriend didn't feel like going out. You have a right to enjoy yourself. Good for you for not moping around at home and deciding to spend time out. If he's like this, it might be time to figure out if he is really what you want in a partner because a partner who genuinely treats you this way is not good.